kindness of Jesus and all he has done for me my very soul shall shout hallelujah praise God for saving me for saving me Dance of Jesus and all he has done for me my very soul shall shout hallelujah praise God for sin Thank him for all that he has done. Thank him for whom he is. I exalt his holy name. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi. He is the greatest, the mighty. There is none like unto him in all the earth. The heaven is his throne and the earth is his full store. He is the giver of life, the giver of strength. He is the way maker. The one who makes all impossibility to be possible. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He made water to spring forth in desert. He doeth what no man can do. He seated where no man can sit. He knows the end from the beginning. Lord, you created the whole world, but you were never created. The beginning and the end, the first and the last, we give you a word of praise. You alone deserve our glory. You alone deserve our worship. We give you word of praise, O oh Lord. You are beautiful, Lord. Fearful in praises. Father, if we have mouth all over our body, it's not enough, O oh God, to worship you. For all that you have done for us, we say thank you. On me today, this seventy into the into God's hands. That God we have his rightful place in our midst. By the presence of the Holy Ghost. And everything will be done according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let every flesh be silent and let the Spirit of God take charge. Let the Spirit of God, let it take charge. Let it take control over the flesh, over the human intelligence, over our ability. praying that God should cleanse us from every unrighteousness that he will set your heart if anything that is contrary to his will that is contrary to his purpose Anything that is known after God's heart that God should have mercy upon us 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For sin is a hindrance to receiving from God. Every demarcation, let it be removed by the blood of Jesus. Father, cleanse us, O God, from every unrighteousness. Purify our heart, our thought, our imagination. Lord, we humble ourselves before you. We ask, O Lord, that you will cleanse us. Make us whole. Lord, we will not miss anything, no God, that you have for us to, today. Commit the message that you're going to hear. That the word will be for you in particular. So Lord, let the word, let it bring increase. Let it bring revival into my life. That the word of God will take you from one level to another. Spiritually, it will take you to a higher ground. It will energize you to fortify you and make you strong as a good soldier of Christ. Let's pray and commit as many who are on their way coming that God will lead them here safely. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you once again for bringing us here to feast from your table. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness towards us. Father, we know you're not, you are not tired of speaking to us. And we are not tired of hearing from you. That is why we are here, O oh Lord. Father, touch every life that we will not live here the same way we came. Put your word in our heart daily. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's open our hymn book. GHS 5.5 GHS 55. 55.
may be seated. Once again, you're welcome. And God bless you all for, for, for coming. And as you have come, it's for a purpose. You will go home blessed and renewed in Jesus' name. I'll quickly go through our weekly activities. Every Sunday is our Sunday service. By the grace of God, we we'll start by 8.50 and um, end by 11.30. And in the evening of the Sunday is our house fellowship. We do all we do alternated because we use it for house fellowship, visitation, and evangelism. So as we find time to come, God will richly bless you in Jesus' name. Because the fellowship in the house is very, very important. And it is scriptural. And as you open your house and welcome the the brethren, the peace of the Lord that they, that they brought will remain with you and your family in Jesus' name. On Monday like this, it's, it's our Bible study. It is not just a Bible study, it is a rich an in-depth Bible study where we take a deep dive into the Word of God. And I'm telling you that most of the things that we are learning in in the Bible study and all our set and all our services, most of them you might you won't be able to to learn them in most Bible school. And as you are coming to soak yourself in the Word of God, it will help you and take you to the extra mile. Don't just come alone. Invite, pe 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 invite people to come. There are people who are hunger for this Word. There are lives that need to be touched and transformed with this Word. And if they don't hear the word, how will their life be transformed? So share the love of Christ. Invite them. And those of us who are coming, let's not be, be tired. As we do so, God will bless us in Jesus' name. On Thursday is our online conference prayer. It's a time where we come, to come together through phone communication to pray and to intercede. I want you to know that there is power in intersection when you pray for others. It shows your selfless affection. And when you pray for the church, you pray for yourself, you pray for others. In fact, the things that you don't even ask God, God will just be doing it for you even before you open, open your mouth to ask. So let's try and join. If to join the on Thursday prayer meeting, there is a dialing number which is 712-775-7035. And the access code is 344-823. As you find time to join us, no matter the challenges that you are facing, our God is able. And it will meet you at the point of your need in Jesus' name. I think that will be the few announcements. And as you try to meet up with, with, the, with the program, your life will not remain the same in Jesus' name.
Let's bring out our tithes and our offering before the Lord. name. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Father, from the abundance you've given unto us, we are bringing this in appreciation and for the growth of the work that you've given us to do. Father, as we give, we ask to God that you will rebuke every caterpillar, every caca womb and plumber womb for our sake. Father, we will not spend unnecessarily. We will not spend money for sickness. We will not spend money for anything, oh God, that does not glorify your name. Father, bless the hands that give. Provide for the hands that don't have to give. Touch every heart, oh God, that, ne that they will have the heart of giving. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody testify, you are good. You are good, Jehovah. You are good. Everybody testify, you are good. You are good, Jehovah. You are good. You are good, Lord. You are good, Jehovah, you are good. Everybody testify, you are good. You are good, Jehovah, you are good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do not let us forget the ushers retreat that is coming in DC. Anybody that can go, go with the ghost in Jesus' name. Um, and there are many of us get in touch with the sister yesterday. Uh, okay. She didn't reply me to I think okay, it is well. Let's keep praying. Go with the post retain them in Jesus' name. Mm. We shall listen to Bible reading on the book of Samuel, chapter 21, please, not 20, chapter 21. Second Samuel, chapter famine in the days of David three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them. And Saul sought to slay them in his seal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement, that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house. Neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that will I do for you. And they answered the king, The man that consumed us, and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. 
But the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, whom she bare unto Saul, Armoni and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Maholathite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. And Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, took sackcloth, and spread it for her upon the rock, from the beginning of harvest, until water dropped upon them out of heaven, and suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. And it was told David what Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, the concubine of Saul, had done. And David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from the men of Jabesh Gilead, which had stolen them from the street of Bethshan, where the Philistines had hanged them when the Philistines had slain Saul and Gilboa. And he brought up from thence the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son, and they gathered the bones of them that were hanged. And the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son buried they in the country of Benjamin in Zela, in the sepulcher of Kish his father. And they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, God was entreated for the land. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. And David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. And Ishbibinob, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, succored him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibachai, the Hushathite, slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jere Oregon, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number. And he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. May God bless his word in our heart in Jesus' name. We shall listen to your song.
Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your children. Asking, Lord, that everyone today, without exception, you bless and enrich our lives in Jesus' name. I pray it will be a momentous, a memorable time. And I pray it will be a great time in the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Touch your people. Satisfy your people. And bless everyone abundantly. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a kiss you amen before you sit down. God bless you real good. We're coming to our study tonight. And for those who are coming for the first time, I'm so happy you are here. And the whole church is happy you are here. And I pray that this will not be your last time. You'll keep on coming. And the word of God will empower your life in Jesus' name. We are studying a series from the gospel according to St. John. And we started from uh, chapter 1. We're now in study 3. And we're looking at verses 14 to 34 today. John chapter 1, reading from verse 14. All through to verse 34. I'm going to read verse 14, verse 29, and verse 34. For a start, look at your Bible. In John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. We're looking at verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Look at verse 34. And I saw, and bear record, that this is the Son of God. As we look at the Gospel according to St. John, he introduces to us the Lord Jesus Christ and he gives us revelation and this is inspired revelation of Christ. The revelation inspired by the Holy Spirit himself and this is unknown to the natural man. In fact, as the natural man who has not been touched by the Spirit of God, not inspired by the Spirit of God, not illuminated by the Spirit of God, as he listens to all this, if he listens to what the head and not the heart, he will not fully understand. We are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. What we're learning about Jesus Christ in the Gospel according to St. John is the revelation of the Lord, the Spirit of God Himself. And the natural man does not see. The natural man does not understand. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So we have to be prayerful that the Lord himself will reveal the might of God unto us. And uh, John reveals quite a lot. He reveals about the Lord Jesus Christ in this chapter 1 alone. Of course, in every chapter, all through to chapter 21, he's talking about Christ from various perspectives and various angles. But as you come to just chapter 1, Christ is revealed to us, number one, as the Word. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not only that was the Word, it was God. You can see there it says, and the Word, capital W, the Word was God. He reveals uh, Christ to us as the Creator. Look at verse uh, 2 and verse 3. It says, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And He's talking to us about Jesus, and He said, "Is the light. is the light that lights every man that comes into the world. And He calls him also the light. Here is the life that he gives and thus through him comes eternal life, everlasting life, abundant life, and the life that makes us live in the presence of God. And he reveals him to us as the only begotten of the Father. 
the only begotten of the Father. He stands in a class by himself. It's like no other one. And no other one is like him. That's why it said in verse 14, and the word was made flesh. It's talking about the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has been from all eternity. He has been living in heaven with the God, the Father, and God, the Son, from all eternity. And now the word that Christ became flesh and dwelt among us and would be held is glory. This is not just uh, one of the offerings of Adam, and this is not one of the descendants of Adam. This is God himself, and he came with glory because he's the Lord of glory. It says we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. That's another name, another title that is given to him in this chapter. He's the only begotten of the Father. Not only that, he's the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, the Lamb that uh, the whole of the Old Testament had been an offering in a preparation, anticipation of that one to come. It tells us in verse 29, the next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him. And he said, Behold, I see he was surprised. It's like an exclamation. He said, The culmination, the fulfillment of everything that had happened from the Old Testament, here is the finality. And he says, Behold, the Lamb of God, we take us away the sin of the world, and here is revealed to us as the eternal one. Eternal one, you know, that in the natural, John the Baptist came to this world before the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, you will say, if you're thinking of natural age, you will say that uh, John was uh, older than the Lord Jesus. But look at verse 30, he said, This is he. Of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me for, tell me the rest there, he was before me. He said, this one is before me. Although you might say that he came after me, but actually he is the eternal one. And because he is the eternal everlasting one, he was before me. And then he introduced him to us as the baptizer. The baptizer and the Holy Ghost in verse 33. He says, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same is he that baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And so you see, he's saying quite a lot about the Lord Jesus Christ, and he says, is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, is the Savior. Jesus only is our Savior. And is the sanctifier, Jesus only is our sanctifier, and is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. He mercies us in the Holy Ghost. He empowers us by the Holy Ghost. He energizes us in the power of the Holy Ghost. Not only that, he said, this is the Messiah. Look at verse 41. In verse 41, the four, he first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, we have found him. I pray you'll find him today. In your heart, you'll find him. In your life, you'll find him. In your family, you'll find him. It says, we have found him, the Messiah, which has been interpreted, the Christ. And so you can see that John was really full of excitement and joy. Because of this revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said he's the Messiah. Not only that, he introduces him to us, reveals him to us as the Son of God. The Son of God, look at verse 49. Nathan and such, and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. What a revelation. Thou art the Son of God. Just in the first chapter, as he's introduced unto us, and he says, Thou art the Son of God. He goes on in that verse 49, and he says, Thou art the King, capital K, the King of Israel. And so you find that this Jesus Christ is the Word, is God, is the Creator the light, the life of all men, and his only begotten son is the Lamb of God, is the eternal one, is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost, is the Messiah, is the Son of God, is the King of Israel, and is the ladder that helps us to get to heaven. You remember the story, you remember the dream of uh, Jacob. As he was uh, lying there, then he saw a ladder from earth to heaven. And he saw the angels of God going up and down on that ladder. And now Jesus said, I am 
climb that ladder and you come on that ladder you climb upon him then he'll take you to heaven look at verse 51 verse 51 and he says unto him hereafter ye shall see the heaven open and the angels of god ascending and descending upon the son of man and even at the introduction of uh, this uh, a gospel according to john you can see that he has a lot for us and he has a lot for you and i pray that today this will begin to burst into your heart and will shine into your life and i pray that you'll never be the same again in jesus name he gives us light he gives us life he gives us grace and truth. In fact, he tells us in verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. We saw his glory. We appreciated his glory. And it is the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of, tell me, full of grace and truth. And then because of that, it's the one that reveals the Father in fullness unto us. Look at verse 18. It says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. He has revealed him. He brings the knowledge of the Father, the knowledge of the eternal God. He brings that to us and he says, as you come to him and you come through him, he'll take you to the Father. He'll take you to heaven and then he tells us that he's the one that takes our sins away he takes our sins away everything that we have ever done that will condemn us before god and hinder us from getting to heaven this is the lamb of god that comes to take away all our sins john chapter 1 verse 29 the next day John said, Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of God. He was so excited. If you, when you see the Lord, the Lamb of God that takes away all your sins and gets you ready and prepared for heaven, that same excitement will come to you. The joy of salvation will fill your soul. You cannot keep quiet and just close your mouth and fold your hand and say, Behold the Lamb. You'll shout it out. Everywhere you go, you will proclaim it. This is the Lamb of God that takes our sins away. Behold the Lamb of God. We take it away. The sin of the world. And here, he even knows the secrets of all men. The secrets of all men. He knows the secret of their heart. He knows you're innocent. Innocent if you're innocent. And he knows your guilt if you're guilty. Because uh, Nathaniel said, how did you know me? When did you see me? We're looking at verse 48. Nathaniel said unto him, When knowest thou me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before Philip called thee, when thou was under the tree, I saw thee. I saw thee. He has seen you today. He knows your need. He knows your heart. He knows your pressure. He knows your sorrow. He knows everything you are going through. And he's going to bring you out of that in Jesus' name. He makes the sons of men to become the sons of God. He's a perfect sacrifice. He's the sin bearer. And he is the substitute. He is our savior. He's superior to John. He's superior to angels. He's superior to all the prophets of the Old Testament. He's superior to Moses. He's superior to all men. And he's superior to every founder of every religion. His name is Jesus. He'll come into your heart. He'll come into your life. He'll touch you and turn everything around in your life for the better in Jesus' name. As we study chapter 1 today from verse 14 to verse 34, we're looking at this as a thought study, study 3, Christ the perfect sacrifice. Christ the perfect sacrifice. And as we look at these verses, we're going to divide to three parts. Number one, the supremacy of Christ Jesus. Is above all, above all in heaven, above all the angels, above all on earth, above all men, above all in every generation because this of the supremacy of Christ Jesus. Point number two, the superiority of Christ to John. The superiority of Christ above John. Here is the one that John said, he came after me. 
but is is preeminent because he's greater and is higher and is more glorious than I am because he was before me. Point number three, the sacrifice of Christ, our justifier. The sacrifice of Christ, our justifier. Point number one, the supremacy of Christ Jesus. So we're coming back to John chapter 1 verse 14. John chapter 1 verse 14. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Here John had been talking about the word, the word, the word. And now he tells us he's identifying him. And he is going to tell us here is the personality of that word. Come to verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him. This no ordinary, this is not just the spoken word, and this is not just the written word. It's telling us now the personality of the word, the eternality of the word, the everlasting nature of the word. All things were made by him, his creator, and without him was not anything made that was made. He calls him the word there, and then somebody might be wondering, the word, the word, what's that? And who is that? It tells us in First John to identify that word and to introduce that word. In First John chapter 5, reading from verse 7. Look at this. First John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear records in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The Father, that's God the Father. The word, who is that? I said, who is that? Jesus. Tell me out loud. Jesus. If he's your savior, tell me out loud. Jesus. If you've met him before, he's done something in your life, tell me. Jesus. The word, that's Jesus, and then the Holy Ghost, and he says, and these three are one. And now he comes to tell us in John chapter 1, verse 14. He says, and the word became flesh. And the word became flesh. That means uh, he's God, but now he came to dwell among us. And because of that, he put on a flesh. And actually, this has been prophesied from the Old Testament. I'll show you now. And he said, we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. That is, this glory is peculiar to him. If you only know Moses, don't know Christ, you not know this glory. If you only know the law, you don't know the grace of God, you'll not have this glory. If you only have religion, and you have not come to Calvary, and to behold the goodness of the Lord through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, you'll not know this glory because this glory is personal to him. Because this glory is peculiar to him. Because this glory emanates from him. He says we beheld this glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Look at what the Old Testament said about him before he came to this world. Isaiah chapter 7 reading from verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 14. It says in verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. It had never happened before that time, and it will never happen again. That the virgin, a woman, a lady that has never, never known a man coming together, like Adam and Eve came together, and they produced Cain and Abel. But this woman by herself, because Jesus Christ is the seed of the woman, he says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name... And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. That name Emmanuel, what does that mean? And what's the scripture telling us? And what are the angels of God revealing to us about the meaning, the significance of that name? Matthew chapter 1, we're reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, we're reading from verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. Who is that Mary? 
and, and she shall break forth a son who is that that's the virgin a virgin shall conceive and the virgin shall break forth a son and thou shalt call his name tell me Jesus uh, for he shall save his people from their sins now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord by the mouth of the prophet you see this is spoken by the Lord himself this is almighty God telling us who that Jesus will be who that one that is to be born of a virgin who that will be and he says he said it by says the prophet behold a virgin shall be a child and shall bring forth his son and he shall call his name and he shall call his name Emmanuel being interpreted is God with us God with us he is Emmanuel and is God with us and the Bible tells us very clearly that this Jesus Christ is not like any other man and is not below the angels is above the angels is creator himself and look at uh, Philippians chapter 2 Philippians chapter 2 talking about this Christ Philippians chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 6 who being uh, in the form of God thought it not trouble to be equal with God see that he was in the form of God from all eternity from everlasting to everlasting in the form of God before he became flesh and dwelt among us even when he dwelt among us we could see his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father he was different he was di distinct because he is divine and that's why it says over here in uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 it says uh, uh, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God then it says but he made himself of no reputation and he took upon him the form of a servant that's the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us and even even though he became flesh and dwelt among us, he still retained the glory. He still retained the divinity and the deity. And then he says, he took upon him the form of his servant and was made in the likeness of men. That's when he became flesh and being found in fashion. As a man, he humbled himself. And that means he emptied himself of his, um, of his divinity. When he appeared before, he, before us here, that's why he was hungry, because he emptied himself. That's why he was thirsty, because he humbled himself. That's why he had pain, because he humbled himself. That's why he was groaning in Gethsemane. And my God, my God, if this cup will not pass over me, because he emptied himself of his divinity, of his divine glory that's why I went to the cross and that's why he died that's why he said my God my God why have you forsaken me that's why he said on the cross I thirst as God he will not go through all that but because he made himself of no reputation and then we're told being, being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient even to the death of the cross but then uh, that has brought exaltation his humiliation brought exaltation. And it says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name above, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, tell me, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, voluntary to, voluntarily today, you can bow the knee to Jesus Christ and say, I surrender, I submit myself unto you. You will be my savior. You will be my Lord. Because if you don't do it now, in all eternity, you'll be regretting. And you'll still bow the knee. You'll be forced at that time. Because he will be king. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He says of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Somebody said, Amen. Amen. We're coming to John, we're coming to John now, and we're coming to chapter 1, John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. I pray you'll behold his glory. You will not be blindfolded. You will not remain in darkness. If you live in this world and don't behold the glory of Jesus Christ and the grace of Jesus Christ, it were better you were not born. Where will you spend eternity if you cannot behold the glory of Jesus and you cannot see the grace of Jesus?
Jesus. How are you going to meet the Lord face to face? Is the one that brings glory into your life. He'll bring glory to your life. He'll bring grace to your life. And every good thing he'll bring to your life in Jesus' name. We beheld his glory. I beheld his glory. I have beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. What does that mean? It says, as you look at Jesus Christ, you come to him and he is full of grace and, uh, and truth. He's full of grace. Number one, there's saving grace. The grace that say, by grace are you say through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God that grace comes from him. But you know there are people that are limited in their understanding of grace. They think, I'm saved, I'm saved. That's all they know. I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm born again the sanctifying grace you come back to calvary you come back to christ and it doesn't only save you it cleanses you it purifies you it purges you and it gives you sanctifying grace not only that there's a spirit giving grace because it talks about the spirit of grace in romans chapter 10 verse 29 and you have been saved you have been sanctified another thing is still awaiting you because it's full of grace and it is full to overflowing he'll baptize you in the holy ghost will empower you in the Holy Ghost and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and Judea and then in Samaria then to the uttermost part of the earth even to this uttermost part of the earth the grace that brings the spirit baptism will come in your life in Jesus name if you look at uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 it says we come to him that may receive the grace to serve there is serving grace and whatever your duty grace will be available for you whatever your challenge as a pastor as a teacher as a leader as a worker whatever your challenge he'll give you serving grace in jesus name you know there are people sometimes they say i'm saved but they are wobbling they are unstable they cannot stand firm and they cannot be steadfast and there is steadfast grace steadfast grace that will stabilize you i say will stabilize you I make you a solid Christian, a solid character, a solid personality, the supernatural grace. You see, there are many things you want to do in the natural sense, you don't have the strength. But then the supernatural comes into your life because he is full of grace and he gives us this supernatural grace. And there was a time when uh, Paul saw, he was, uh, Paul the apostle, he was uh, you know, having some challenges. Maybe you have some challenges. Thank God tonight, grace is flowing in your life all those things that give you kind of you know you're timid and you're fearful you say am i going to overcome this grace is coming tonight because he's full of grace of his fullness you will receive in jesus name the sufficient grace for all the uphill tasks you have to perform, the sufficient grace. For all the things that confront you, the sufficient grace. And tonight, the sufficiency of His grace will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Look at that, John chapter 1, verse 14 again. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Full of truth. He has the truth. The truth that sets us free. Every yoke in your life you will break. Every kind of chain you'll snap them tonight and shatter everything in Jesus' name. It's the, it's the truth that sets us free. If the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. It's the truth that's like a foundation to all. Foundation to all. You see, everything Christ does, the foundation there is the truth. The truth for freedom. The truth for forgiveness. The truth for the foundation is the truth as a fountain of life. Fountain of and the truth that is coming from Christ, this is an inexhaustible fountain. And the fountain of his truth flowing into your life as it's flowing to your life tonight. I said it's flowing to your life tonight. Uh, have you noticed, have you noticed you put maybe 
a dirty plate, uh, you know, somewhere, and then you run the tab, and you're not even touching it. Yeah, the tab is just, you know, coming on it and coming on it, and it's coming from a particular fountain, and then you just leave the plate there. Don't uh, take the plate away, and the, and the tap is running on it. Eventually, when you come back and you look at that plate, what do you tell me about that plate? totally clean. You know, sometimes you are just there. You don't even know that any oppression is going on. A supernatural oppression is going on in your heart right now. Because the truth, the truth is like a fountain and it's flowing and flowing and flowing into your life and you just feel clean and you feel pure. It's like it's getting you ready to for heaven. The truth of the Lord will get you ready in Jesus' name. But coming back to John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 15 right now. John chapter 1 verse 15. And it says, and John bear record of him and cried, saying, There is a sea of whom I speak, he that cometh after me, and is preferred before me, for he was before me. You know, John was humble, and John was uh, truthful. He said, I'm talking about Jesus. You might think I'm older than him, but he is, he is the everlasting one. How could you be older than the one that had been there before the beginning of the world? How could you be older than the one that is there from all eternity? Is the eternal one. Is the everlasting one. And because of that, is preferred before me. In verse 16, and of his fullness, and we all receive. Here is John saying of his fullness, if you see anything good in me of his fullness, have I received that? If you see anything righteous in me of his, uh, of his fullness, have I received that? And then he says, grace for grace you are receiving tonight. He says, for the law was given by Moses, and but grace and truth came by Jesus. Now he tells us something, something wonderful, no man has seen God at any time. The only big Gotten son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. He has declared him. He, re he reminds us again that this Jesus is full of truth. I'm looking at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 30. As, the, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. I see this will continue there. I said you will continue. That's how the power of God will keep on increasing in your life. And the freedom that he has given you, the chains he has broken, those chains will never come back anymore. And the salvation he has given you, that salvation will abide and remain in Jesus' name. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. There are people that think, you know, we go to church. It's not just to go to church. It's the truth of the word as a fountain. The truth of the word as a foundation. The truth of the word as the source of freedom. It's the truth of the word in its fullness, in its entirety. Is it being declared to you in that place where you are going? Because, you know, you might spend all your life in that place. You call it a place of worship, a place of religion. And the truth about Jesus Christ in its fullness is not there. You're not going to be free just because you are faithful and just because you are, you know, going there, you are devoted. But it is the truth that comes out. Like it's coming out tonight, and that truth is going to set you free. And from the top of here to the tip of your toe, this truth will come to you. He will break every chain in your life and destroy all the works of the devil. And you say, Praise the Lord, I had the truth. Praise the Lord, I knew the truth, and the Lord has set me free. He'll set you free from fear. He'll set you free from judgment. He'll set you free from condemnation. I know the truth. I am free. Somebody there, I know the truth. And I am free. You're free in Jesus' name. And your freedom, nobody will take away from you. And it, it tells us something there. He it said it's full of grace and it's full of truth. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. God is able. In your life, God is able. In your studies, God is able. In your profession, God is able. In that family, God is able. Against that mountain, God is able. 
against all those challenges, God is able. Able to do what? And why is he able? Look at this. And God is able to make what kind of grace? All grace abound toward you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Grace is coming. The fullness of grace is coming. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That always, everybody shout always. always. Having all sufficiency. Tell me out, having, having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. You will do good. You'll be good. From inside you to the outside, everything will turn out to be good in Jesus' name. Look at this again. And God is able to make all grace abound toward who? toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work when you get back home and if there's any challenge any problem and it appears i'm not able i cannot make it i cannot climb that mountain come back to this verse and read it and close it and then say praise the lord my god is able i say praise the lord your god is able he will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And whatever the challenge may come in your life, you need more grace come to the throne of grace. We're looking at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading here from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Let us therefore come boldly. You know, even when you have done what you shouldn't have done, and your conscience is condemning you, and then the devil is in a high, you see now you have blown it, there's grace waiting for you. The grace that forgives, the grace that cleanses, and the grace that changes our lives, and you come quickly, you come quickly. Let us come, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain, tell me, you'll have mercy on you. Tonight you'll have mercy on you, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You'll supply all the needs in your life in Jesus' name. We come to point number two now. Point number two, the superiority of Christ to John. is above John. It's above the angels. It's above Moses. And it's above anyone you can think about in the past, in the present, anywhere. It tells us from verse 19. In verse 19, John chapter 1, verse 19. This and this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and the Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. I am not the Christ. He said, I am the signboard that is pointing the way to Christ. He said, I'm the pointer. I'm just directing people to the real person he said i'm directing you to the savior i'm not the savior i'm directing you to the lamb of god i'm not the lamb of god i'm directing you to the sanctifier i'm not the sanctifier i'm directing you to the baptizer in the holy ghost i am not the baptizer in the holy ghost i'm directing you to the king of kings and the lord of lords and he says i'm not that king he says i'm directing you to christ i am not the christ look at verse 20 again and he confessed and, de and denied not but confess, I am not the Christ. And he asked him, What then art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And uh, they say, he said, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What seest thou? Of thyself. Look at uh, verse uh, 23. And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as, as said the prophet Isaiah, and they that were saints uh, of the, well, the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, why baptizest thou then? He was baptizing in water. If thou be not the Christ, nor Elias, neither the prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. There standeth one among you whom ye know not. Who is he talking about? 
and he was not there physically. But he's saying, because his God is omnipresent. Because his God is omniscient. Because his God is omnipotent. You don't know him because you cannot see him. Because you are looking with natural eyes. And he's right here in our midst. And everything that you know you might think about, you might say, he's hearing everything. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Have you ever thought about that? Only God could say that. An angel could not say where two or three are gathered. I'm there in their midst. No, they are, they are not in every place. A man, the founder of a religion, cannot say where two or three are gathered. I'm there in their midst. Only the one that is omnipresent present is here is here with you is there where they are hearing the word of god now is there with them as he's touching us here he's touching them there as he's transforming us here he's transforming them there and so john said he's there but you don't know but thank god i know i said thank god i know and then in verse 27 it says he it is who coming after me is preferred before me who Shoes, lash it. I am not worthy to unloose. And these things they were done in Bethabara beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. Have you noticed uh, what John said about the Lord Jesus Christ? Because they were asking him the question. They said, Who are you? Are you the prophet that was to come? He says, No, I'm not. What were they referring to when they said, are you the prophet that was to come? Uh, let, let's come to Deuteronomy chapter 18. You see, those Israelites, they had been told that somebody was coming, a prophet, but a prophet, uh, not like the ordinary prophet, a prophet with a capital P. He was coming to them and is coming to your life today. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm reading here from verse 15. It says, The Lord thy God will raise unto thee a what kind of p is that capital p some have not opened their bible Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 25 uh, sorry verse 15 are you there now yes. the lord thy god is god your god yes. are you saved yes. are you born again yes. the lord is your god the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet in the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hack him. Look at this in verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. The word of life, word of eternal life, word of salvation. I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that i shall command him let's look at the fulfillment of that you know why we're looking at all these verses i could just tell you and just preach unto you but then you will not know that it's in the bible you say he said but now we know god is talking to us is what is talking to us and when we say that jesus christ is that prophet with the capital p and we show you that this is what the word of god is saying you know that this is not suggestion this is not just a, you know take it because i said it you take it because the word of god is saying it we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 3. acts of the apostles chapter 3 and here we're reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 3 verse 19, it says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send, what's his name? Jesus Christ. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. And he says, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Now verse 22. Are you there? If you are there, tell me the first line. For Moses truly, this is the fact. 
This is the reality. This is something that comes to your soul like a real truth without any falsehood. It says, For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever he shall say unto you. He'll talk about repentance, hear him. He'll talk about a restitution, hear him. He'll talk about faith in the Lord, believe on him. And he'll talk about salvation, believe him. He'll talk about sanctification, pure in heart, believe him. He says whatsoever he shall say, and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people, yea, and all the prophets from Samuel, and those that followed after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. And ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Look at verse 26 now, unto you. I said unto you. I said unto you. Are you part of the recipients of the blessing of God? Unto you first. God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you. In turning away, every one of you, from his iniquities. Here John assured the people. He said, no, I'm not the savior. Christ is the savior. I'm not the king. Christ is the king. I'm not the one to come. Christ is the one to come. I am not the one. The lamb of God. Christ is the lamb of God. And, and actually, it is John, he revealed that Jesus Christ was greater than himself and yet look at what Jesus said about this John about uh, this uh, witness this is John we're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 11 Matthew chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 11 Matthew chapter 11 verse 11 talking about this John the Baptist who witnessed concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and verily I say unto you among them which were born of women there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist think about that why did Jesus say that because Moses spoke about the Lord Jesus Christ coming he didn't see him and then Samuel and then David, they all spoke about the Lord Jesus coming and he didn't see him. But now uh, this uh, John the Baptist, he began to speak about John of a sudden as we're talking about Jesus. Behold, the following day Jesus came and said, Behold, how fortunate I am. All the other people from the Old Testament, they have been talking about him and he didn't show up. And it's at my time. Something good is happening at your time. Everybody has been talking, is coming, is coming, is coming. Isaiah said, is coming unto us, a child is born. Unto us, his son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. He said that he died, he went, he has not seen him. And then all the others, and Daniel spoke about him, that he is coming. He even named him as the Messiah. He said, he's the son of man. And he came with the clouds, and he appeared with the ancient of days. And then he said that, he's gone, but John, he said, he's coming. I mean, all of a sudden he came and as we are now saying to you today is coming is coming to your life is coming to your family and every good thing you have had that you will do when he comes is going to do it in Jesus name that's why like Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 11 verily I say unto you among them which are born of women there has not arisen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he is the he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. He that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now a believer is saying, but I don't understand that one because uh, you know um, the I may be the least in the kingdom. How am I greater than John? If you look at this. John was greater than all the people that came before him because as he was announcing Christ is coming, Christ came and he saw him. But before Jesus went to Calvary, 
John was beheaded and John died and the culmination the finality of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that he announced behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world that sin had not happened before John died now that has happened and then he has been buried and he has risen again. He has ascended into heaven. And now he says, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. Anyone that opens the door, I will come into him. I will fellowship with him. And now, every, he now says, You are seated in heavenly places together with the Lord Jesus Christ. You are greater than John. By grace, you are greater than John. Because of his love, you are greater than John. And if John had all those things that he had, you can have more. Because Calvary has taken place. Because the sacrifice has been made. Because the lamp has taken away the sin of the whole world. And you can come and present yourself. Lord, here am I. Take all my sins away. He will do everything in your life in Jesus' name. Well, we're coming to John chapter, 50, chapter 8, verse 53. John chapter 8. Verse 53, we're talking about Jesus Christ being superior to John and superior to everyone. We're looking at John chapter 8, verse 53. Are thou greater than the father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets that are dead, who makest thou thyself? They were talking to Jesus and they said, now tell us about yourself. The way you are talking and the things you are saying and the statements you are making. Are you greater than Abraham? Are you greater than all the prophets? Are you greater than all the people that have come? In verse 54, Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honors me, of whom you say he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I have known him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. You will not be a liar. But I know him and keep his saying, Your father, your father, hear this, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it. And I was glad. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He was looking ahead and he saw me coming. And he was very glad. How did that happen? You remember, this is I seek now asking Abraham. And he said, Father, here is wood, here is fire. Where is the lamb? Where is the lamb? And Abraham said something prophetic. And he said, My son, the Lord will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. Now I seek only understood, okay, the Lord will provide a lamb. And eventually, as they got there, a lamb was provided. But that is the law, there's the law of double fulfillment. It's so fulfilled at that time uh, to start with. But then in the future, Christ was still to come and is the Lamb of God. Tell me the Lamb of God. I said the Lamb of God, who is that? And then he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my days and he saw it and he was glad. Then the Jew said unto him, Ah, thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus said unto them, Tell me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Did you remember, or do you remember rather, how when Abraham was coming out of the place, he has slain all those kings that took Lot and his property away. And then as he was uh, coming, uh, somebody met Abraham. And Abraham blessed him. And then Abraham even gave him uh, the, the tithes. And then he gave Abraham bread and wine. You remember his name? Tell me out loud. Melchizedek. Now it said, Abraham rejoiced to see my days, and he saw it, and he was glad. We're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, 
the priests of the Most High God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation the king of righteousness. And after, after that also the king of Salem, which is the king of peace. Who is the prince of peace? Who is the prince of righteousness? But three, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days, nor the end of life, but was made like unto, tell me, made like unto, tell me out loud, the son of God, and abideth a priest continually. Abraham rejoiced to see my days, and he saw it, and he rejoiced. Before Abraham was I am. It tells us that Jesus Christ is greater than everyone and greater than John the Baptist. And in your life, the greater one is going to do great things. As you receive him, as you accept him, as you say, yes, I know him. He has been revealed by inspiration unto me. And because he's presented to me, I'm not going to dodge the responsibility. I give my heart, my life, everything. I give unto him. It will be yours in Jesus' name. We're coming now to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 29. John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh the sin of the world away. Uh, the sin, he takes all the sins away. Actually, this story of the Lamb, this revelation of the Lamb, had been from Genesis, as I told you earlier, in Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, we're reading from verse 7, Behold the Lamb, Behold the Lamb. We're looking at Genesis chapter 22, verse 7, And I seek spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, my father, he, and he said, Here am I, my son, and he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the Lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. God will provide himself a, a lamb for the burnt offering. Look up here for a moment. If you remember the story, Isaac was to die. And then he said, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? They got to the place of sacrifice and the father bound him. And then stretched him on the wood. And before he could uh, lay hands on him, the uh, God of heaven called unto him and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And then as he looked up, he said, Don't lay your hand on that child. And he saw the lamb that God has provided. Every sinner should have died. Already you're on that altar. You should have been, you should be born in hell fire forever. But here comes the lamb, our substitute. And when uh, John said, Behold the lamb of God is saying you should have died the soul that sinneth it shall die but you will not die I said you will not die because the Lamb of God has been provided for you and he is your substitute we're looking at uh, Exodus chapter 12 Exodus chapter 12, and I'm reading here from verse, uh, from verse 3. Exodus chapter 12, verse 3. Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of the month, they shall take them, every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Again, you know, there was a sentence of death, eh, because the death angel was to pass through the land of Egypt at that time, and everyone, the firstborn, eh, would be dead. But in, the, in their own case, the children of Israel, so that they can escape the death and the judgment, the Lord say take a lamb and that's why the lamb has appeared and as you receive him today you will not die the death penalty is taken away in jesus name look at verse 12 for i will pass through the land of egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of egypt will i execute judgment i am the lord and the blood shall be for you a token 
It shall be for you a, a, a sign. It shall be for you a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Death will pass over you. Calamity will pass over you. Damnation will pass over you. When I see the blood, behold the Lamb, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world. He says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, it tells us in Isaiah chapter 53, talking about the Lamb. The Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. I say chapter 53 and we're reading here from verse 6 Isaiah chapter 53 and we're reading from verse 6 here is talking to us now it's getting nearer the revelation of the lamb it tells us in verse 8 verse 6 it says all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all that means every sin you have committed every transgression every iniquity every defilement every evil that you have committed by the mercy of God by the grace of God you can confess everything bundle everything together is laid on the Lamb of God he bears your punishment I said he will bear your punishment he'll bear the perdition look at verse 7 and he was oppressed and he was afflicted and he opened not his mouth look at this is brought as tell me out loud is brought as and he says it's he is talking about a person he's talking about jesus christ is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb and he openeth not his mouth verse 10 yet it pleased the lord to bruise him for your sake he has put him to grief because of you when thou shalt make a when thou shalt make a soul an offering for sin an offering for sin behold the lamb of god he takes the sin of the world away he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hand look at verse 11 he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many thank god i'm one of the many i said i'm one of the many as you give your life to the lord many are called few are chosen the people that give themselves to the lord and believe on the lord jesus christ my servant shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquities that's the passage the eunuch of ethiopia was reading in acts of the apostles chapter 8 acts of the apostles chapter 8 reading here from verse 13 and philip ran thither to him and had him read the prophet Isaiah, and said understandest thou what thou readest Many of us, we read the Bible at home, we read the Bible everywhere, but then do you understand what you read? As you come, the Lord will give you understanding. And the Lord will give you revelation. And as he gives you the revelation, then you apply the, you apply the word of God. It's revealing to you. Verse 31, and he says, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture where he read was this. He was led as a sheep, as a lamb to the slaughter like a lamb dumb before his sharer and so he opened not his mouth in his humiliation his judgment was taken away who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth and the eunuch answered and said on the eunuch answered philip and said i pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this of himself or of some other man and philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him tell me jesus jesus is that lamb that's how that man got saved that's how you got saved and those who are not saved yet that's how you are going to be saved tonight we're looking at first peter chapter one first peter chapter one talking about the lamb first peter chapter one verse 18 it says for as much as she, as she know that she were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and uh, and gold from the from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but 
with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish or without spot. You are redeemed now as from the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It takes away our sin. It takes away iniquity. And all the things that we should have suffered, everything is taken away in Jesus' name. Titus chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. Titus chapter 2, we're reading from verse 14. It says in verse 14, who gave himself for us. That's the Lamb of God, who sacrificed himself for us so he can be our Savior, so he can be our sin bearer, and so he can be our substitute, and so he can be the final sacrifice and the perfect sacrifice. Christ, he gave himself for us. It was not that anybody forced him, but voluntarily because of his love, and totally, entirely because of his love, he gave himself for us, for us. I'm one of them. I said I'm one of them. Who gave himself for us? Are you saved? Salvation is available for you. Because Jesus Christ is a savior. Jesus Christ is a sin bearer. Jesus Christ is a substitute. He gave himself on our behalf for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. He cleanses our lives. He changes our lives. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. And then he tells us and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works is the lamb of god he takes away our sins he takes everything away he separates us from our sin and he separates the sin away from us he forgives all our sins and if if he frees us from all our sins he cleanses us from all our sins he grants us the power to go and sin no more because out what sin they are forgiven in what sin they are cleansed and he purifies us from sin and prepares us for heaven and he'll prepare you in jesus name i said he'll prepare you in jesus name when his power gets into us that power crushes the power of sin from our lives and it sets us free first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 5 first john chapter 3 and we're reading here from verse 5 it says and ye know i pray you all know this you'll know this personally you'll know this from experience you'll know this experientially because you see jesus christ the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world you see and you know that that he was manifested to take away our sins that's the purpose that's why he came he was manifested he was revealed and he went to the cross of calvary to take away our sins and in him is no sin whosoever abideth in him sinneth not i'll abide in him i said i'll abide in him whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth has not seen him neither known him little children let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous he that committeth sin tell me church member he that commits a sin is of the devil church worker he that committed sin is of the devil you know there are religious people they're very religious they come to church they read the bible they sing the songs and they do everything but they don't understand we must come face to face with the lamb of god we must have his grace in our lives and when that grace of christ the lamb of god comes into your life he'll take away your sin he'll break the power of cancel sin all the pollution and the perdition of sin everything it will cleanse you because the blood of jesus christ cleanses us from all sin he says sin that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might tell me the son of god was manifested that he might i can't hear my people the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil every work of the devil in your life it will destroy sin it will destroy yoke it will break sickness it will take away calamity it will take away anything originated from satan originating from satan originating from the devil that's why he came for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil whosoever is born of god i am born of god i said i'm born of god 
when you are born of God, you come into a new life. And you come into a new nature. You come into a new perspective. And he said, whosoever, young or old, whosoever, man or woman, whosoever, you've just become born again or you've been born again for a long time, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. The power to live victoriously, the Lord will give every one of us in Jesus' name. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Born of God. Is he still there? Born of God. Is she still there? I pray the Lord will confirm it to your life in Jesus' name. I'm coming back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and saith unto and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh the sin, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I search after me cometh a man which is preferred before me uh, be, uh, for he was before me and I knew him not but he, he that, uh, but that he should be made manifest to Israel therefore I might come baptizing with water and John bear record saying uh, I saw the spirit descending uh, from uh, heaven like a dove and it abode on him and I knew him not but that he but he that sent me to baptize with water the same search unto me upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining upon him the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost and I saw and I saw somebody there and I saw You'll see him tonight. you see his redemption tonight. you see him in the fullness of his grace and truth tonight in Jesus' name. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. I saw. And then when he saw, he bear record. If you have seen, if you have discovered that Jesus is your substitute, then you go and tell other people. Your bear record, if you have known that he is your sin bearer, all your sins are taken away, and the power of sin is broken. Salvation has come, a new life has come, and you can say, I know him as savior, I know him as redeemer, because he took my sins away, and the joy of salvation is there, and the victory of salvation is there. You become a new creature in Christ, all things are passed away, and all things have become new. You go out and and tell other people what I saw, you will see. I said, what I've got, you will get. What I received, you will receive. And remember, it's full of grace and it's full of truth. And that grace will work in your life. Somebody there, the truth will work in your life. And as you see him and behold him and believe him and hold on to him and embrace him, everything he came to give us at Calvary will come to every one of us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and tell the Lord, oh Lord, I want to see you more. I want to see you more. I want to see you more. You will see him. You will see him. You will see him. And then uh, his truth and his goodness will flow into your life. Make it a day with the Lord. Make it a day with the Lord. We will introduce Jesus to reveal Jesus Christ unto you. He wants to be everything uh, unto you. He wants to be your savior, your sanctifier. You're baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he wants to be everything for you. And his grace is available for you. Call upon the Lord. And the Lord will reveal the fullness of his love and grace and mercy and compassion unto you even tonight. Give you the grace, more grace. If you've known him, you need more of his grace. If you have not given your life to Jesus, this is the opportunity.
He is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the whole world. Surrender yourself to Him. And He will purify you and present you before God. He is a righteousness. He is the Son of God. The one that was spoken by the prophet of all. And now we have seen him. We felt him. We've received him. And we bear record that he is the Son of God. Pray and ask the Lord. grace, the boldness to bear record of him. Anywhere you go, the power to bear record of him. To declare him with boldness. That Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. He is the one that can set free. That where God wants you to be at record, where you're supposed to declare Jesus, that you will not be timid to be at record. He is the perfect sacrifice. He was sacrificed. He knew you. He knew everything about you. He knew your thoughts. He knows your way. He knows your tomorrow. He knows your today. So him. That he sacrifice. That he sacrifice will be visible in every aspect of your life. You need reviver the sacrifice. So for this reason, the Son of Man will be manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Every works of sin, say, Lord, let it be destroyed. Every works of the enemies, let it be destroyed. Our liberator, whatsoever challenges you passing through, bring them to the cross. Sacrifice them at the altar of the Lord. Behold, He taketh it away. Anything you're going through, that is the reason. He is here. That thing that is giving you sleepless nights, 
behold the Lamb of God. That guilt of that sin, of that action, behold the Lamb of God, he, he ticketed it away. That problem, that predicament presented before him, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the internal sacrifice. The one that was and is and it is to come. Before the creation of the world you have been existing you are the beginning and the end there is none like unto you O God Father because of the love you have for us you humble us yourself even to the death of the cross that you might redeem us from our sins 